In 7.4a, I'm breaking it up a little bit today. I decided not to do all of 7.4. 7.4 has two worksheets. There's a 7.4a and a, it actually has a, an I, like a Roman numeral number one. There's 7.4 and then there's Roman numeral one, which is the left page and it only talks about cosecant. And then on the right page, there's a number two. And so we're gonna cover notes on that next class. So for homework tonight, you need to do all of worksheet three, and then you're doing the first half of 7.4. I call it part A, it's called part one. I'm gonna put here part one only, just so that I have it written down as well. Here. There we go. So the first thing that I need to talk to you about are calculators. We're going to be dealing with cosecant and so if you are trying to punch cosecant into your calculator, you are going, there is no cosecant button on this calculator. If I look at this calculator, we have a sine, a cosine, and a tangent, but we do not have, this is not even in focus, let's see down here maybe it will be, sine, cosine, tangent. We do not have a secant, cosecant, or cotangent button, so we will have to use its reciprocal identity when we plug it into our calculators. So you're going to see that, and as a matter of fact, I am going to show you an advanced feature. If you have the calculator I recommended, like one of these Casios, either FX300 or at 115ES, I'll show you an advanced table feature, kind of neat to use. Uh, that will make your uh, table a little bit easier to do. If you do not have the calculator, don't fret. You can still do this piece by piece, one at a time. Uh, a couple of things that I need to point out. Division by zero does not exist. Period. If you want to know why, it's, a pretty, it's because it could be positive infinity or it could be negative infinity. Or it could be negative infinity or positive infinity. Doesn't, it doesn't necessarily, it's not the same answer every single time. It depends. Because it's not the same answer in mathematics, because it's not always positive infinity or not always negative infinity, mathematicians decided a long time ago, we're just going to call it undefined. And that's what they came up with and that's what we use today. But literally, dividing by zero creates this infinite result, either positive or negative, but not necessarily both at the same time and not consistent either. Okay, When we have something that's undefined, whenever we divide by zero, it's going to create an undefined value. On a graph, that means that there's going to be a vertical asymptote. A vertical asymptote, you are going to draw it as a dashed vertical line, meaning this is a boundary line that you cannot cross. I want you to think of an asymptote, just like you learned a long time ago, as a boundary line that you do not cross. You can approach it. You can get closer to it. As a matter of fact, you get infinitely closer to the line as you go towards positive infinity or negative infinity, but you never actually get on top of the line. You ne it doesn't exist at that point. We are going to be using dashed sine waves following the rules of 7C.2. So if you had issues with that, you're going to have real issues with uh, this section. And before we draw the cosecant, so make sure you draw a dash sine wave. I'll give you an example in a little bit. And every place where the sine crosses the x-axis, the cosecant will be undefined and have a vertical asymptote. So this is where the x-intercepts are going to make a huge difference for our cosecant 
graphs. I decided to do two examples with you. The two examples that I am going to do with you are numbers three. Oh, and this table. Okay. I'm not going to do the whole graph. I'm going to let you guys do that part as far as the table goes. But these are my two examples. And the examples that I wanted to give you uh, are this way because I wanted to show you the table function and I also wanted to show you the decimal approximation on the calculator. So you've already done this first column somehow. Uh, I want to say it's in your very first worksheet. You could just literally copy the same values. But I wanted to show you an advanced feature on your calculator. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take this and I'm going to put it into my calculator. I'm going to make sure my calculator is in radians because these angles are in radians. If it's not in radians, I press shift, set up, and I choose number four, which says RAD radians. I choose number four. Then what I'm going to do, this is an advanced feature. I'm going to press my setup key and I'm going to choose number three on this particular calculator. It might be a different, it might be number five on the uh, 115s. But I'm going to choose the one that says table. And uh, that's because this is a table. And my f of x, my first function is going to be sine and I'm going to press alpha x see how I did that I press the alpha button and I press X this is my first function sine of X I press equals then this calculator says do you have a second function what's your G of X what's your second function and I'm gonna put in the cosecant how do I put that in I put it in as 1 divided by sine of alpha X parenthesis and it does two equations. It's asking me, where do you want to start your table? And it says, do you want to start at one? No, what do I want to start my table at? What's the first value? Zero. So I put in zero and press enter. Where do I want my table to end? Now on here I have pi over two, but you guys on your actual worksheet have up to two pi, so I'm gonna press two shift pi. I want to end at two pi radians. Then it says, what do you want to count by? What do you want to go up by that's equal increments? Now I'm going to go up. This goes up by pi over six. If I go up another pi over six, it's going to be pi over three. If I go up another pi over six, it's going to go to pi over two. So I want to count by, my steps are pi divided by six, and I type that into my calculator. Now here's what the calculator is doing. It just made a table. And I literally pressed five or six times the buttons in here and everything's filled in except for the pi over fours. Here's what I mean. At zero radians, the sine is zero. Because f of x was sine of x. And one divided by zero was an error. What does that mean? It's undefined right there. Pi over six is 0.5235 radians. My Y value is 0.5. One divided by 0.5 is two. Like I said, this is an advanced feature of this calculator. It makes things go faster. If you do not have this calculator, don't freak out. You find the decimal and then you do one divided by 0.5 to figure out what the second value. Now, the next value is another pi over six, so I'm jumping over here to pi over three. This one down here is pi over three. 0.866 rounds to 0.9. 1 divided by 0.9 is 1.15 rounds to 1.2. <coughs> Scroll down. 
one, one. This skips the pi over four, but if you wanted to go and count by pi over fours, you just go back and do the table function again and count by pi over fours. This is just a way for you to do all the values on a table and you can keep scrolling down and seeing where you're at for those values. Yes, sir? The alpha button is right next to the shift button. Let me see if I can get it to show up in the screen. I'm pointing at it right there. See where it says alpha? You press that first, then you can go find the X, and that way you're punching your X variable as well. Once again, let's say you don't have this particular calculator. You're going to have to do the sine of pi over 6. You'll figure out what it is. Then you'll do 1 divided by that answer to figure out what the other thing is. So you'll have to do each one by hand, and that's okay. Now, with that being said, when you actually go to graph, this is what I'm going to recommend that you do. I'm going to recommend that you follow the rules of 7C.2 before drawing your cosecant graphs. So I'm going to draw every single thing for the dash sine wave that I did before, except I'm going to have these vertical asymptotes, and I'll show you what it's going to look like. Let's do number three together. Okay. Let me turn off that light. So the first thing, my A value. A value is negative one, which means... I'm going to start off by putting a 1 and a negative 1 for my y-axis because that will let me know if, that I have the correct amplitude. My B value is 1 over 4. So I'm going to put period is equal to 2 pi divided by 1 fourth. I'm going to figure that out. Instead of dividing by 1 fourth, I'm going to do 2 pi times by the reciprocal. It's 8 pi, right? That means my fourth quartile needs to be 8 pi. Second quartile is 4 pi. First quartile is 2 pi. Third quartile is 6 pi. So I basically draw this dashed sine wave. Now watch this. I do, uh, because it's negative 1, I go midline, dotted, 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 extrema. Midline, extrema, midline. I am not drawing a sine graph. I'm drawing its cousin. But in order to know what the cousin's going to look like, I will always draw the parent function. This is what I call the parent function. Every time this sine value crosses the x-axis, it means that you're doing 1 divided by 0. It means that every single x-intercept will create a vertical asymptote where you see the x-intercepts. x-intercept, x-intercept, x-intercept. Those are going to be asymptotes. Those are boundary lines, things that don't exist because it's approaching either infinity or negative infinity. I say that to you because I'm going to switch colors and I'm going to actually graph or attempt to in blue. C 
since this is above the y-axis, this is what my graph looks like. Since this is below the y-axis and it's negative, it's going to go that way. What you see in blue is the graph of cosecant. It's like two U-shapes that go in opposite directions. The only points that cosecant have, it includes points that are greater than 1, and it includes points that are less than negative 1 or equal to. But it excludes the points between negative 1 and 1. There are no points that are here. There are no points on the asymptotes. There are no points on the dotted lines. It's only the blue graph. And this is one period above, below, and above because it was a negative cosecant graph. You are going to do a lot of these so you'll get some practice. My recommendation to you is to draw the parent graph and every time you have a signed value that's equal to zero, it's going to create division by zero which creates vertical asymptotes and that's basically your boundary lines. These are positive y values, so this goes in the positive direction. These are negative y values, so it goes in the negative direction. That's how it's going to work. Will amplitude be the same? Yes. I'm going to stop your notes right there.